teaching resources and welcome to another Tuesday night where I am talking all things music uh, lessons, ideas, teaching tips and all those sorts of things and hopefully you're getting a lot of goodness along the way. So tonight I'm talking about rhythm and we're also going to be looking at um, some ways that I personally actually use this resource with my kids in the classroom to teach um, and help them learn their terms because that's one of the most important things that you need to do is kids can't talk about the music if they don't know what they're talking about with the actual music terminology they need okay so that's the most important thing so famous last words I will share my screen as long as I find the last thing that one and let's just go to the slideshow. So I'm just going to go through a lot of different things tonight, a lot of different ideas. I'm not going to go through things too deep. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple because um, I will probably go into each one of these a little bit more detail at some point. But I said, I'm not going to do that tonight. Okay. So uh, sorry, just um, getting rid of some thingies. Alrighty. So as I said, that's what we're doing tonight, teaching ideas for teaching rhythm, terms and definitions. But honestly, these, these ideas can be used with any terms. Doesn't matter which ones, doesn't have to be rhythm. Just how it so happens that I'm talking rhythm. I'm actually doing rhythm and duration with my own kids at the moment. So that's why I am talking about that. Okay, so let's have a look. So welcome, as I said, um, I'll talk about what are the eight elements of music. I'll give a brief, very brief explanation of those. And if you want more information, please go to my website, juliajulia.com, where I've got a whole stack of information that's free for you to go and have a look and um, research and use in your classroom or with your students, however you want to do it. Okay. Also do a brief explanation, uh, as I said, about those. Um, a brief explanation on rhythm and then I'm going to give you a stack of teaching ideas for rhythm so I think I've got about eight different things um, activities that you could do to keep your kids interested and learning and um, engaged in the actual learning of music terms so here we go so the eight elements of music are in alphabetical order in this way so we've got dynamics which means how loud or soft form or structure is the arrangement of the different parts of the music Harmony is about how the music sounds and how the parts are arranged. Melody is about is the main part of the music, usually. Um, not all music, but my, main part. It's a series of pitches that forms a tune. Rhythm is your rhythm, how the um, arrangement of long and short sounds. Texture is the thickness and the layers of sound and how they sound together. Timbre refers to the instruments used and the unique sound quality that they have. And tonality ties in with harmony okay again is the overall sound and how it um we're talking major minor all those sorts of things um for me i call rhythm duration and i also put harmony melody and tonality under the one banner for the six concepts of music which is behind me um that way sorry um behind me and that's what i call those pitch okay but we are looking at the element of music rhythm or for me the concept of music duration so rhythm simply means the arrangement of notes of different lengths, often grouped and placed in time in relation to a pulse or a steady beat. Now, personally, as I said, I've been using doing rhythm with my kids at the moment and their reading of note um, rhythms, actual note values and reading them has been pretty sad. So we've been doing a lot of desk drumming at the moment. So it's been interesting. But I'll show you some different things and different uh, bits and pieces that you can use to help your kids learn about what rhythm is. So I'll refer to this mind map, which again, you can get a free set from my website. Okay, if you put in your information, you'll get a blank version of this. But the best thing is this is actually on the website. So you can use the blank version, refer your students to it and get them to complete this. So in terms of the mind map, this is just a really good way of it of showing your kids well these are the different things if you're going to be talking about rhythm these are the different things you could be listening for and um, looking for okay so if you're actually looking at the score the actual musical score you could still use this information but I come from it from a mainly um, listening point of view because again the type of exam that I um, my senior students do is a listening exam and they have to be able to do this just by listening so rhythm okay so I actually will start on T for tempo because I always go T O T A L B P R total B P R. It's just one way I get my kids to remember it. Okay, so if I start with tempo, the speed of the pace of the music, ostinato, 
a repeated musical pattern. So obviously, if we're looking at rhythm or duration, we're looking for rhythmic patterns, not so many, not so much um, like melodic ostinatos or chordal ostinatos. Time signature, we're looking at the two numbers at the beginning of a piece of music that determine the number and type of beats in the bar of music. Okay, there's a whole heap of information you need to know about that. Accents, we're talking about stress or emphasis on a note. So we could be talking about syncopation or backbeats or uh, again, some sort of stress depending on what the music is doing. Length of notes, simply how long or short it is. Okay, in each rhythmic role or each um, uh, instrumental role, depending on what it is in the music. Beat, the underlying pulse, is it definite or indefinite? Phrasing, the shorter sections that combine to make up music as a whole. And then lastly, rhythm, the arrangement of short and long notes in a piece of music. So for rhythm, it could be that you're describing a rhythm as being like a straight rhythm. So it's falling on the beat. Or you could be talking about a syncopated rhythm, which is falling off the beat. Or it could be a bouncy rhythm. So it's got a really bouncy feel with dotted notes or a swing rhythm. Okay, that's the sort of thing. It could be a jumpy rhythm. It could be a slow rhythm. It could be smooth any sort of words you want to use to describe. That's what we're talking about with rhythm. But to be able to do that, your kids have to know what the rhythm terms are. So this is one of my favorite things. So again, I as, look, I've been teaching in the classroom for over 20 years and I use this. That's why I've got it in my store because I actually use this. So before I do any sort of listening activities with my kids, I do a few different things. Um, but one of them is simply get them to learn the terms and be familiar with the terms that we need for that particular element or concept of music. So this is, as I said, everything you need is in this little packet. Now there's, it's, it's not a lot, um, it's not huge, but I tell you what, it, it is everything you need. You, you really don't need much more than this. And there are um, so many different ways you can differentiate, but we're talking about the rhythm terms, but you do get stacks of things in here. So in this particular um, little packet, you'll get rhythm terms with links to actual um, videos explaining them. Not every single term, but for as many as I possibly could get there. But in the works is something for you to have that would explain every single one. Rhythm terms, okay. Um, again, what you can see on the page there, learning rhythm terms, lots of different worksheets and activities which is what we are going to focus on today, suggested listening music. So you don't have to use the ones that I suggest, but if you are, um, you can use any, like any concept, sorry, any um, unit of work you are doing, you can add rhythm into it. Like you can study rhythm. It's up to you. Okay. Um, and then obviously some rhythm listening worksheets, but they're different levels. Now, this is the thing I like about this packet. And it was developed after teaching for many years and um, realizing and understanding that kids are at different levels. So I've got some kids who will be, who are going to be just being able to do the listening response worksheet one, where others are going to be able to do three or five or nine or whatever it happens to be. Everybody's working at a different level and it just um, helps the kids where they are. Or Level one is about where my year sevens are at, okay? Um, the next one, we're talking three and four. We're talking my stage five kids, which is year nine and 10. And then the um, the more complicated questions are for my older students, which are in years 11 and 12. But one of the first things I love to do is this one, okay? So before you do any teaching at all, you simply do a KWL chart. So three things I know, three things I would like to know, and three things I think I will learn. Now, this is one of the best little activities you can do just to recognize prior learning and to understand um, where your kids are at, what they know. It's interesting though, when I do this activity, um, I teach a range of abilities, like some of my year seven classes, you know, struggle with lots of different learning needs there. And other classes are, um, are, are very, very bright and from um, a selective stream, which means they have to do an exam to get into that particular class. Okay, so they're very bright kids. And it's interesting that when I do this particular activity, my classes who are of a higher ability struggle to do this because they are looking for a correct answer. And I, my lower ability kids, they're happy just to have a go. They don't, they don't, not worried because they're not afraid of actually being wrong. Whereas my, um, you know, for want of a better word, my more bright students, um, they want to get it right. And then and I have to break that from them and say, no, 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 there's no right or wrong answer. This is just, what do you know? 
what do you know what can you tell me and what can we work out together about this particular topic and in this case it's rhythm but it could be for anything okay the kwl chart can be done for anything but again that's the first thing i love to do before i do anything else so the next thing i like to do is just simply teach the kids the terms so we talk about them we look at them we look at the information we look at the um the things teacher directed explain it we discuss it we might play some samples i might show some samples um and then make the learning as hands-on as possible so if we're doing say a swing beat we'll go okay well let's see it let's let's actually do a swing beat together or a backbeat i'll show you what a backbeat sounds like on the drum kit can you hear the difference between a forward beat and a backbeat um staccato legato sustained isometric multi Metric. like all those sorts of terms are actually in there and you can see there if it's got a blue um, writing and an underline that means it's actually got a link in it to go and have a listen to what a swing really swing <laughs> rhythm actually is okay um again talking about all those different things there and multi-metric one of the best things there is good old beatles um we can work it out when it cha it changes from waltz time to um common to oh, sorry uh, four four to three four and four four back again okay so it's a really good explanation okay so the third thing i like to do with my kids is another thing just to reinforce the terms and reinforce what they're learning is all about um just writing i know that sounds really boring but you know what it actually helps and it really helps them get that in their little minds if they just read the information they're not going to get it okay so i like to talk about it and read it read about it then we actually either copy the notes or the terms or the definitions now sometimes i will have depending on how busy and how pushed for time we are i will um just give them the definitions and then we work through putting the terms in but if i have the time i will actually give them the term and then get them to um to write the definition in the space provided okay that's that's the way i prefer to do it but again if we're pushed for time i'll give them all the definitions and we put the the actual terms in there and because we've already talked about them and discussed them we have those conversations about it okay so who can remember what vivace means what does it sound like what does that word sound like you know where else have you heard that word vivace what does it you know vivacious oh so what's a vivacious person they're, they're a bit bright and bubbly well that's what viva vivace means okay it's a fast and lively pace that's what it means so you get you're making those connections and i like to make the one for presto who else has heard the term presto who uses it oh a magician great what does it mean what do you think it means how do we make it connect to music and again just making those connections for the kids um because it helps them transfers that information from their short-term to long-term memory so again depends on how you want to do this but photocopy the sheets and glue into books you can choose to do that one or please note only 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 photocopy and glue into your books if you push for time okay and sometimes that happens because i'm pushed for time at the moment <laughs> and i'm we're doing this um very very quickly this particular concept i want to get it done before the end of term and so it just means that um for we are you know doing it the the cheats way if you want to do it but there are better ways to do it and i'm about to show you to do that how to do that so another one i like to do and this is depends on the kids now i've had some students in the past who have really struggled with spelling things and even though i really don't mind that they don't spell things correctly sometimes um it's so it's so hard for me to read what they're actually trying to say that i try and give them uh, some of those kids i'll go okay we're going to do some spelling practice on these words so that you get used to actually um, writing them out so that's where that practice one two and three comes in now again for my junior kids i used to like starting my lessons with their spelling words and i'd literally hand out the books and go right go to the back of your book you cop everybody's copying out their spelling words um once okay and that used to give me enough time to get them in get them started Started, get them straight onto an activity mark the role and then we could do the rest of the lesson um, but again depending on your students depending on what you want to do i don't generally do a spelling test it's more about just getting them used to actually practicing so copying the terms to help them with the correct spelling is is important now what you can do is a good old look cover write and check strategy now this is something that most kids would have done in elementary or primary school is where they actually read the word okay they look at it they cover it up they write it and then they check and if they're correct great then they move to the next word okay um 
it's up to you how you want to do it. And again, if we, you've got students that might need more um, practice in actually reading those words, so that because let's face it, they're a bit weird. You know, we use some really weird words in music. You might want to go, okay, together we are going to read all the spelling words on this page and um and then you know clap a beat rhythm beat pulse meter simple time compound time tempo ostinato and it like forcing them to actually say something in time with you actually will really help their actual um again that that transfer of short term to long term memory so read the terms together students look at the term then cover it and write the term in the column for memory then uncover the term to check the spelling and you just repeat okay and again it's a really good way to um, do that you don't have to use the photocopy page again i generally don't i actually usually write them all on the board say okay guys you're writing this down in, in the back of your books copy them out um you know fold your page into four okay and write it in the one column and so the next lesson they write in the next column next column next column because most of my kids i don't know about yours but they really struggle to draw columns in their books so it's, let's just fold the paper anyway moving right on so another one, again, this is another one of my favorite ones. And I tend to use this one more with my older students, with my um, like year nine, 10, 11, 12 students, um, because it really helps them understand, especially some terms that could actually go into different categories and different elements or different concepts, okay? So the concept of definition map. So what you do is in the center, you would put the term. So say the term is syncopation. Okay, and then what does it belong to? Which category or element does this belong to? So you put the term in there and in the box that says category, you'd put in rhythm or duration. Now, if for example, it was a term that did fit into multiple um, uh, different elements or concepts, you could list them all there. Okay, and again, this is really good for kids to understand oh that actually is the same thing we were talking about when we were doing that. So that yeah, phrasing is a good one, is a really good one because you can talk about um, rhythmic phrasing, melodic phrasing, chordal phrasing. So it's, you know, in duration or rhythm, it's in melody, it's in um, structure, it's in so many different concepts or elements. Getting off the track, sorry. Then examples. So if you have, for example, played and um, something that um, is, because I was using the term syncopation, maybe if you've, you've played a song um, together or you've listened to a song. One of my favorite examples for syncopation is Black Betty. Okay, Spider Bait's version. I love it. Um, but the um, symbols is they're on that, that's, they're on the offbeat. They're, they're um, syncopated, very syncopated. And it's a really clear example. Or the example, the another example I like to use for syncopation is I get my kids to stamp on the floor and that's your beat. And then you clap in between and go, right, that in between beat is that syncopated. That's where it's syncopated. That's off the, the beat. So they could be writing those examples, whatever actually makes them and helps them remember okay and properties or characteristics again that would be your definition okay syncopation is an accent on the offbeat okay um important is try to connect as much as possible to what the student already plays or knows so again it's really important to be playing a lot of music um whether actually physically playing it or actually listening to it um so that they've got those examples to refer back to and go oh that's right i remember that that was in that or that song or that song or that song and they can hear it again and recognize it the next one is learning rhythms. Um, again, another favorite. I tend to use this one more with my year seven students, sevens and eights. Um, again, it's a really simple one to do. Word defini definition image, write the word or term, okay? Write down the definition and draw an image. Now I have done this with older students. They tend to get a bit, mm, they don't want to do it so much why do we have to do this and i remember i had a, um, a year 10 class i was getting them to do this for and there was a couple of boys that really made the classes interesting let's just say that and their images were sometimes not appropriate so sometimes you have to put that caveat on it especially when you're teaching high school you wouldn't think you'd have to but you do um, but that image is what really helps them make that connection to that term okay because it's supposed to be about what helps them remember okay not what you've told them to remember and another one number seven okay told you there was a stack today the kim strategy again another nice simple one you don't have to the other thing is like if i go back to this one you don't have to photocopy these sheets simply just ask them to draw in their like do this in their book okay word here's the definition have them displayed for the kids to do and then they do their own image all right 
next next one. And in fact, if you actually look at my um, my elements of music terms and definitions that I have available in my store, you'll see that I've got a lot of images, you know, to help connect. And it's funny. Um, I've always done that and um, if you find some old videos of mine one of the best ones I remember is um, ornamentation in melody and my kids we'd been doing I asked them to watch the video and we were recapping what we'd done um, what they'd watched in class and the kids were going ornamentation and my example was you, you know you can have a melody that might be like a Christmas tree which is a bit boring until you put all the ornaments on it which makes it all fancy and beautiful and where was one kid goes I don't know what ornamentation is and they all turned around and went didn't you watch the video she was talking about a Christmas tree but again it helped them make that connection <laughs> to that sorry I still remember this this, this class finished this would have been easily 10 years ago actually it was 10 years ago when I was doing doing that one but it's it I remember it because they remembered it and that that's the thing so keyword strategy again you don't have to necessarily photocopy these pages and I suggest you don't have them do this into their books but for each keyword write down the word or term okay um then write down a memory clue what sort of connection are you going to make you could make this do this in different order i would suggest you go keyword then information write down the definition then do a memory clue okay again it could be an image it could be um a written memory this is how, again depending on the type of student you have um they might prefer to write something as opposed to draw something um and then a statement or sentence so put the keyword into a statement or sentence showing that they understand the meaning of the word now you can decide if you want to put that into a statement or a sentence depending on your um what you're doing with your kids so you might the statement might be say your keyword was um I don't know beat all right information it's the underlying pulse of the music memory clue it might be that someone's um you know drawing someone walking like beating or heart beating okay and the statement or sentence could be the music that um we were listening to in class called xyz had a nice steady beat that was played by the drums that's a really good example of a statement or sentence that shows the students understood the actual meaning of the word beat in the context of music. I think this is the last one. So this is new word. All right. Um, this one, depending on the type of, again, type of group you use, I have done this one before, but it doesn't work well for every single music term because sometimes it's really hard to have a synonym and an antonym. But depending on what you're doing, um, this the, it can work, and but it, it sometimes it's really hard for them to actually, it's, they will struggle with those part, parts of it. Okay. But new word is simply, again, Add the term, word or term, write the definition, draw an image to help them remember. A synonym is another word or term that might be something similar. An antonym is obviously the opposite. And context, put the word into context. So it could be the context, could be the element of music that it belongs to. Alrighty. Um, and sentence or question, again, depending on what you want them to do, you might want them to write a question because the theory is if they can write a question, they can answer it. That's theory. Okay, so or you might want to do a sentence like I just gave the example. So if we were going to say the new word might be say, um, say it's a tempo term. All right, so if we go tempo um, and say I do allegro. All right, the word new word is allegro. Definition means fast speed. Okay, and to perform at a fast pace. Image could be um, like a uh, like a um, a cheetah running it's probably a bit too fast but you know something running because it's like you're running a synonym is something like could be running all right antonym could be the opposite of um fast would be slow so and the context would be under the um the element of music rhythm all right or tempo that is connected to tempo and sentence or question the question could be what um what is the opposite of um allegro or what does what does the Italian term for allegro mean? Okay. Or again, a sentence could be um, the music uh, was performed at, at a, an allegro pace or the music was performed allegro, which means fast. Okay. So again, just depending on how you want to actually do this with your kids. And again, depend like, I wouldn't suggest you do every single term like this, but you might want to go, okay, we're going to do all the tempo terms using this one because that would be easy. Or you might want to do all the beat terms with using a different technique doesn't really matter you're going to find some that you prefer 
I know the ones I prefer to use and which ones work well with my kids. Um, but again, it's just helping them cement those terms into their little minds. Again, transferring from long short term to long term memory. That's the whole aim of it. So if you'd like to know more about how to write about music, check out my writing about music course on Teachful. Now I'm going to be opening those doors um, very shortly for just a very, very brief little time because I know my kids are performing, sorry, getting ready for their trial exams, which uh, will be in about six or seven weeks and everybody will start to do their trial exams then. Um, so you can go to juliajulia.teachable.com. Now, I said the doors aren't open yet. If you want to actually get into um, or know about it, want to know about it, do the Master of Concepts, Master the Concepts of Music course. Enroll in that. That's for free. You get some um, great resources in there anyway. But um, then you'll be on my little list so I can let you know when it's actually the doors are open. Also, you can find music classroom resources ready for you to use over my Teachers Pay Teacher store. Okay, obviously use the des description in the link below, especially the one we're talking about today, which, which is Rhythm and Music. And again, if you'd like a copy of the free Elements of Music Mind Maps, use the link, link there, juliajulia.com forward slash free mind maps or smooshed together. And if you'd like to know more information on rhythm, okay, go to my blog, juliajulia.com. Okay, there's stacks of information there, stacks of free information. And obviously there's lots of videos here in, on um, Facebook, as well as if you might be watching it on YouTube. Okay, so let me just stop share. So I'll say goodbye and I am Julia from Julia Teaching Resources and until next week, thank you for watching. Bye.